welcome to the Nutrition Burnout Podcast, your home for food and body obsession. I'm your host, Christy Brown, founder and creator of Intuitively Strong. Hello, darlings, and welcome to another episode of Nutrition Burnout. We are going to dive deep into a pretty touchy subject about whether it's possible to diet while eating intuitively or not. I get asked this question so much because so many people ask, Christy, I want to do intuitive eating, but I cannot for the life of me gain any more weight. I'm already at my max. There's no way. And even the possibility scares me from even walking into this world. And I get other people asking me, all right, Christy, but is it possible to you know, do intermittent fasting and do that intuitively? Or can I macro count intuitively? Or can I do intuitive keto or anything like that? And there is so much that goes into this. And honestly, there's things that have helped me from my dieting world that I want to explain here as well. Um, and this is all, again, from my experience, from my experience with my clients. And I just want to put it out there that everyone is so so different. And yeah, there are people out there that can heal their relationship with food through macro counting or through dieting or through further restriction. And for me, it wasn't possible. I tried that for so many years and, you know, seeing people doing it, or I guess even if they were doing it and were failing, I still followed them on Instagram. And, you know, I didn't know what was going on behind the scenes. And I was like, okay, well, if they're doing it, I can do it too. And I'm going to tell you some people you and I most likely, if you're here listening to this, it will not work for us. And it's through no fault of our own. We did nothing wrong. We're not broken. It's just that that is a very small percentage of people. We're talking 1% of people that can, you know, heal their relationship with food or heal, heal themselves from an eating disorder with macro counting, uh, things like that. So I want to walk into this very delicate issue and I want you to figure out what is right for you because I know I get so caught up in, well, she lost so much weight and healed her relationship with food and I have to think her story is not my story, okay? I have a way different life. I had different traumas growing up uh, with food, with my body, with my body image, uh, and maybe, you know, then maybe they did. So everyone is so different in this aspect, and a lot of us that have deep, deep, deep traumas with food, um, you know, with eating disorders and possibly even with other traumas that have happened with our bodies, it only deepens that misery gap between us and our healthy relationship with food. So I'm just going to put that out there. And I want to dive into this topic of, is it possible to eat intuitively and to heal your relationship with food at the same time, but while sticking with keto or sticking with intermittent fasting or, you know, calorie counting, whatever it be. And I tried this, like I said, for so freaking long. I mean, for years I would tweak, I would adjust, okay, I can have anything I want, but I had to restrict it to a certain amount of calories. And I would, I have these old notebooks and I went through them and I'm just reading them like, okay, your goal is to, Christy, you can have anything you want, all right? But stay within your calorie count. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, this is counting macros anyway. Like, I'll never forget the first thing that drew me to counting macros was this guy that said, I have 400 calories left and I'm just going to eat cake because I have 400 calories left and I'm going to eat chocolate cake. And he was eating this giant piece of chocolate cake. And I'm like, I want to be able to eat whatever I want and, you know, stay within that, that macro count. I think that's that I could do that. And that's really what kind of got me into that. So I was like, sweet, I can have chocolate cake and lose weight. Like, let's do this. You know, I grew up in that era of snack wells and, you know, low fat, low sugar, um, you know, snacks and hundred calorie packs were life, you know, low carb, low sugar. Uh, when I grew up, it was in the no fat trend. That was when that was going on. And now the trend is no carbs. So you'll see that there's various trends that go throughout our lives. And depending on when you grew up, it, that's going to be the one that likely sticks with you, which is why, you know, people in my mom's era, um, that generation, they tend to go low calorie, low fat, and our generation is going to go more towards low carb, higher protein, because that's what we grew up on, again, because of the trends. So when we talk about macro counting. Let's just use this one first. Okay. So 
that's what macro counting is. It's basically eating whatever you want as long as you stay within those guidelines. And there's different forms of uh, macro counting. Some people just stay within uh, the calorie budget, right? And then you can move to, okay, stay within this calorie budget, but also make sure you're getting in no more than this many grams of fat. Uh, stay within this amount of protein and stay within this amount of carbohydrates, right? And some people like me even went as far as staying within the calories, the macronutrients, but also making sure I had this amount of fiber and keeping within this amount of sugar. Uh, I'll never forget, I, I tried going down to 25 grams of sugar per day and I got so lightheaded. I was dizzy. I was passing out left and right. And I'm like, this is healthy. I'm doing it. <laughs> And I felt like shit. It was terrible. It was awful. But that's what I thought. Okay, yeah, this is what I have to do. So that's what this program says. Stay within 20, 25 grams of sugar. And I don't know if you know this, but even things like vegetables have sugar in them. So I'm like, nope, can't have broccoli. Nope. I was pretty much keto at that point because it was just strictly meat and cheese. And, you know, it, it was very low carb. So um, it was extremely difficult to do. But um it, it was something to where there's still a restriction there, right? There's still that I can have anything I want as long as I stay within this amount. And if we look at something like keto, it's the same thing. You can eat whatever you want, keto, paleo, low carb, whatever you want to call it, but uh, you can't have anything on this side of the list, you know, uh, processed foods, anything with sugar in it. Um, you can't even eat seeds at one point, certain seeds. Uh, it's just, it's very, very different. You're eating, you know, I remember eating salmon and uh, almonds for breakfast one day. It was terrible. I was like, I hate this, but I have to do it because this is what's healthy, right? And so there's still that form of restriction. So then, you know, we talk about intermittent fasting, which is what the what one of my listeners had me, hey, Christy, can you do a podcast episode on this? Sure, let's do it. Um, so when we talk about intermittent fasting, yeah, you can eat anything you want as long as it's within this time frame, right? So again, that's there's still that form of restriction. So I think what we're looking at here is with all types of dieting, there is a form of restriction somewhere. And whether it be in the amount of foods that you eat or the quality of the foods that you eat or in the timing of the foods that you eat, whether it's when, where, why, or how, there is a restriction added to it. So what's happening right now is that intuitive eating is kind of taking the world by storm, but also people are taking it like, the macro people are taking it. Well, now you can do intuitive macro counting, intuitive keto, intuitive, um, you know, intermittent fasting, things like that. And it's, it's actually the exact opposite of what intuitive eating is. So, and listen, 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 Linda, listen, listen. I'm going to tell you something because I also have a very unbiased opinion of this at the end. Okay, so when we look into intuitive eating, intuitive eating is not restricting your food in any way, shape, or form. Meaning you are not restricting and I can only eat at this time, or I can only eat these amounts of food, or I can eat anything I want, but I can only stay within this amount of calories. That is not being intuitive, all right? That is the exact opposite of intuitiveness. And I know for a lot of us, you know, when we start intuitive eating, we're like, it's not for me. This is exactly what I thought. I'm like, there's no way I could ever do this because I need some kind of structure in my life. Like I need to know, all right, when to eat, what to eat. And it's funny I say that because even as, you know, a bodybuilder, shoot, I was sending people macros and I was mixing people's macros up and redoing their macros, redoing mine, creating meal plans for people. I mean, I was basically a macro counting coach before I was an intuitive eater and built intuitively strong. My previous business name was actually Bodybuilding Mama and I helped women lose weight after they had babies. Yep, the exact opposite of what I'm doing now. But again, I had to go through that journey to know that this isn't right for me because out of all the meal plans I was writing out within two months, nobody could stick with it. And sorry, Christy, this happened, life happened. Okay, things should be slowing down. Boom, try it again and boom, they get off track again because life just isn't built to you know restrict yourself 24-7. So intuitive eating and fasting, I don't, I will say this with a very certain tone is that they are not the same thing. 
And if you do put them together, I don't think that it would be on purpose or intentionally. So let me back this train up a bit because you're like, wait, what, Christy, what did you just say? So I'm going to tell you as a fact, my clients, I've just noticed my seasoned clients, my OGs, my veteran clients, and even myself, okay, I've noticed that as food has come down from its pedestals, become less intense because I can have this food anytime I want. I could have that chocolate piece of cake for breakfast if I want. I just know that much sugar in the morning doesn't make me feel good. So I choose not to have it. Um, You know, I could eat the salmon and almonds for breakfast if I wanted to. But that also doesn't taste good to me. And I prefer a sweeter breakfast rather than a savory breakfast. So that won't work for me either. So intuitive eating is basically understanding the signals of your body, learning how to honor your hunger and respect your fullness. But then you start moving into that gentle nutrition aspect, which is more or less, I'm going to become intentional about this. I'm going to become intentional about my meals of, I know that I can eat anything I want, but I also know that having chocolate cake for breakfast doesn't make me feel good. So I'm going to, you know, even if I want a bite of it, I can have a bite of it. That won't, that won't hurt me at all. That won't give me that big sugar headache that I always get or make me feel completely lethargic and hungry 20 minutes later after I eat it. So what I'm going to do is I shoot, I might have a donut or even half of a donut and pair that with protein and fiber and, you know, maybe with some egg and toast with peanut butter, or maybe I'm going to have yogurt and maybe I'll sprinkle some uh, chocolate chips on top and mix it with oats and make a parfait or something like that. So there's different ways we could be intentional about our health. It doesn't mean you're just completely eating Skittles all day or chocolate cake or anything. It's, it's basically saying I have no rules, which means food is just food again. See, I, I picture this very much so like uh, I, I say this all the time. And if you've listened to my previous episodes, you understand it. But when something is scarce in our lives, it becomes a scarce resource and we want it like the toilet paper pandemic of 2020 when COVID hit, right? I've said this before, but in case this is your first time listening, um, I talk about how I went out to the grocery store and you know, when toilet paper was like, worth the price of gold at that point in time, cause you could never find any on the shelves. Um, What happened was I, like I said, I had a bunch of toilet paper at home and I was fine, but I was there at that point in time when somebody was putting them out and I was like, oh my gosh, I better get some now because I don't know when I'm going to get some again. And I got toilet paper, even though I had enough, but because I was scared, I wouldn't be able to get it again. I still got it. It's the same thing with binge eating. If you're scared that this food is going to go away or that you shouldn't have it, or you need to be restricting it, or you can only have a bite, or you can only have it at this time of day, or you can only eat it, but within, you know, this, this frame of mind or whatever it is, then it's just not going to work. It's going to create more restriction and deprivation. And the reason that binge eating, eating disorders, disordered eating patterns happen is because of restriction and deprivation. The more you deprive yourself of something and not only something, but something that you like and that tastes good and that you love, the more you're going to want it. Because my philosophy is let's keep the things we love in our lives rather than spending our whole lives trying to keep them out. And let's learn how to eat them in amounts that feel good to us. And if you're like, okay, Christy, but that still doesn't help me answer the question of, I really need to lose weight. Okay. I, I can't, I want to do this intuitive eating thing, but I'm so scared to gain weight and I can't gain any more weight. I am at like my max right now. And my answer to that is you have to start building this foundation of health, which means we have to completely knock your pyramid of health down and we have to start rebuilding it right? Everything you knew, carbs are bad. Don't eat fruit past this amount of time. Don't eat past, you know, uh, an hour before bedtime or, you know, stop eating at this point, or you can only have 300 calories per meal. Like what all those little food rules in your head, we're knocking them all down. And what we're doing now is we're telling ourselves, okay, we're going to start building this pyramid, this foundation of health. And we're the basis of it is going to be food freedom. Okay. You cannot have a healthy relationship with food. You cannot end binge eating without having this healthy, healthy, stable, cemented in relationship with food, knowing that this food is not going anywhere. I can always have more later, right? Never having that restriction of, oh, but I'm not going to get it again until my next cheat day next Sunday. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Um, you know, that's only going to bring more scarcity and more fear towards it. So my answer to you would be 
allow yourself, give yourself that time, right? This is just a season of your life. Go through the intuitive eating first, the process of freeing yourself from all expectations and restrictions and rigid rules around food and allow yourself that peace and freedom around food. And yeah, at first you might be like, oh my gosh, Christy, I'm going to be like a kid in the candy store. Are you kidding me? I'm going to go nuts. I'm going to go crazy. But what this does is you might do that for a day or two, a couple of days, and then you're going to be like, I'm, I feel like trash. I want to um, get some vitamins in me. I need some vegetables. Where's my fruit? Where's my salad? And then that's when the balance starts happening, especially when you do this with a coach and somebody who has the experience of it. Hello. Um, you're really going to get that aspect, that structure of, okay, this is what's next. This is what I want you to focus on next so that you don't feel so out in the open and just like a free for all, because there are th- like ways you could go about doing this that seem more structured. It's exactly what my 12-week courageous nourisher course is. But as you go through this, what you're going to notice is that naturally, naturally, and I'm talking about my seasoned clients, you know, that that have been with me, the OGs, the ones that have like, okay, I I can literally have an Oreo and an apple in front of me and one doesn't have more pull over it than the other other than how do I want to feel after? Or sometimes they're like, I can have both. You know, like they have no intensity around food anymore. And when I talk to my clients now because they're in my master's academy, my advanced uh, academy for people who want to add in more nutritional structure, become more intentional with their food after they've healed their relationship with food. I've noticed that most of them have gone more towards plant-based foods. It's not to say that they're only eating clean or that they're eating keto or anything or paleo or whatever. In fact, most of them are going more towards plant-based. They're going more towards whole foods now because it makes their body feel good because that's something we work on is to focus on how you want to feel instead of how you want to look. Because if you think about it, when you're focusing on something like I have to stay within this amount of calories, what you're doing is now instead of the bread and peanut butter, you're going to have the rice cake and peanut butter because it's less calories, right? With the rice cake. But now what you're also doing is you're forfeiting the magnesium, the calcium, the fiber, the whole grains and the protein that are in that bread. Yes, all those calories have meaning to it because it's energy and it's vitamins, it's micronutrients and it's resources that your body needs and loves and that keep you full. Now you're forfeiting that all for the sake of a calorie count because you have to stay within your calories. So by opening up the idea that I'm actually healthier when I can understand what to eat and how to eat. It's like, I want to choose these because I want to feel good. It doesn't mean that I can't have, you know, the chocolate cake or chocolate chips or anything anymore, but I know that that's not going to make me feel good. And I can always have a little bit of it. I can have a couple bites of it and it might satisfy my craving because we work on the four types of hunger that we experience and which type of hunger is it. So we work on all of these things that will really help you get through to this other side that these OG clients are at. So now you have my OG clients and even, you know, myself, I've definitely recognized this this a couple years ago, but even like protein, I'm a huge meat eater. I was a bodybuilder. My gosh, I, at one point I was doing 300 grams of protein per day. I mean, it's just, it's innate within my life to where's my protein, where's my protein on my plate. And now I've noticed I'm going even more towards plant-based protein. I'm not going to become vegetarian. Not that that's bad. You do you, but I'm a do me. That's my business, right? So I'm just noticing that, wow, I I still eat chicken. I still eat fish. I still eat all those things, which is totally fine. But if I can, I'm like, no, I'm going to choose the legumes. Like that sounds really good. Um, I just naturally float towards that. And it's funny too. I've had a couple of my clients when we speak of intermittent fasting that naturally just, I'm really found out. I used to eat, you know, some of my clients are like, I used to eat right when I woke up. I had to eat right away. And they're like, I just prefer to kind of wait a little bit, have my coffee and then eat. So they're like, I'm, I guess, intermittent fasting, but I'm not forcing it. It just kind of came along. And I'm like, hey, if that's how you do it, then do it. You know, I don't, whatever feels good to you, I want you to do. And, you know, then I tell them, okay, so if you're going to push back your breakfast till about 11 o'clock, even though you wake up at eight, that's totally fine. But maybe expect to be hungrier throughout the end of your day, because don't forget your body's still going to need that same amount of food. But it's going to require you to maybe put it in a smaller time frame or a smaller window. And again, this is just these are just things that my clients have experienced from just going through this journey that naturally their their 
going into a more into like a fasting world and not because they, they want to, or they had to, but that's just because they're like, my body prefers this. And you know, one day she goes, I, I had breakfast at 9am cause we had brunch with my family. And she goes, it was totally fine. I ate a really small breakfast and I didn't, I didn't, you know, flip out that, oh my gosh, I shouldn't be eating now. I should be waiting until 11. But she goes, I allowed it. And she goes, very next day, it was the same thing. She goes, I, I went back to my normal schedule. So again, I think that if you, if something does, you know, tickle your fancy, let's say, if, if intermittent fasting has always intrigued you, but it's been like really forceful, I would say go through the intuitive eating process, work on healing your relationship with food and build up to that point where you can get to that top of the pyramid, which is the nutritional structure. And then from there, see what your body prefers. Because I know right now you're like, Christy, I can't even tell if I'm hungry or full right now. I don't even know if I should be eating this or if I should be doing that. But I'm telling you, once you start building that foundation, That's the whole point of intuitive eating is understanding what you need and what you want and how much of it that you want. That's the exact point of this all is that it's going to tell you. Your body's going to tell you if you just listen. And those cues are still there. We just need to listen. We just need to really focus on that self-awareness and start building that up. And that is no quick and easy task. It's no, um, you know, 24 day venture, it's something that you're going to have to work on for a little bit. So again, this is not a short term fix. It's something that's long term, but long term and, and something that lasts longer, something that's more consistent. It's what sticks. It's sticky. But I'm also going to tell you that, you know, I learned a lot from dieting and even though I don't diet anymore, There are some gemstones that I've taken away from years of my chronic dieting. I mean, I'm really trying to find the silver lining throughout all of my years of toiling with my unhealthy relationship with food and hating myself lean. And I've spent too many, too many years of my life in fear of scarcity around food and the rules. And I literally self-destructed after living a life of food restrictions, like forbidden carbs, demonizing sugar, repelling processed foods. And I was a meticulous macro counter like I said, and I had spent a lifetime hating my body in all the sizes and shapes that it was and thinking, you know, happiness is just another five pounds away. It's another five pounds away. Once I get there, okay, once I was there, okay, now another five pounds, another five pounds. And so making peace with with food and healing my relationship with my body image, I can honestly say that there was some good from the dieting. So not only the fact that I found out that, you know, the life of only clean eating and living that meticulous, you know, fitspo life, it was not what made me happy. Rather, it was the realization that my worth, my self-worth didn't actually come from needing a body shape that was approved by others. It was this journey to approve myself, to build up my self-worth on a level that required no weight or body fat percentage target. So this was an inside job for me. And for most of us, it is. When we start peeling back the layers of I have to lose weight. Okay, why? Keep asking yourself why, 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 why? Like a four-year-old, you know? Uh, All right, why? Okay, because I want to be healthy. Okay, well, you can be healthy without the scale. So what else is it? Why do you need to lose weight? And when you kind of peel back those, the layers of that onion, you keep going, you get to the core. And that core, uh, 99% of the time is because I want to be loved and I want to be liked and I want people to think that I am valuable, that I'm an asset, that I am in need of their their love and approval. And I, a lot of us women were taught to do that with our body shape, right? I'm valuable if I'm pretty, if I'm this shape, if I'm this tan, if my hair looks this way. So a lot of time, a lot of times, you know, this Like I said, it definitely is more of an inside job and it's not really about the food, but our underlying issues surrounding food. So, okay, I'm going to get off my little soapbox there, but I'm going to tell you that if it weren't for my bodybuilding phase, I... I never would have found out all the ways to pimp out my, my oatmeal with protein powder and to have this just love and need for protein. And I still eat protein oats, proats like almost every day, uh, which is just protein powder and oats. But now it's like protein powder is like 
I, I know how to use it without feeling triggered. And I can, I know how to get quick protein in because of all the ways that I had, you know, just protein left for my day and had to find out how to make a meal out of it. So, you know, now I can eat a pizza without calling it a cheat meal. And that doesn't leave me all this guilt ridden anxiety over the fact that I didn't have much protein in it. But then I'm like, okay, next meal, I'm going to focus on protein and then be intentional about it. So to tell you the truth, my bodybuilding phase, that really helped me figure out how to get protein in and different ways to do it. And then I think about my clean eating whole 30 phase, right? The minimalist phase, which I wouldn't have known how much I love just eating an apple for a snack. Like, I, when is the last time you ate just an apple without peanut butter, without anything? I forgot how good apples tasted. And I, it was just amazed at like, wow, this is actually really good. And this one took me a while, but I absolutely love the fact that simple foods can satiate me and leave me feeling satisfied. So fruit for dessert, that's a big one for me. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't discount the fact that I still love brownies and a twisted cone with sprinkles, but that's the thing is that I also know that, yeah, this apple is going to be great. You know, it sounds really good and refreshing right now. And then I think, okay, if it weren't for my low carb phase, like I wouldn't have known just how creative I can get with adding vegetables to my meals. And I'm not talking spaghetti squash or cauliflower rice because that holds me over for like an entire 10 minutes, but rather adding carrots to meatloaf or adding peas into my uh, pasta or uh, crisp cucumber slices alongside my pizza because it just sounds good and it brings that different texture, you know, that cold uh, and crunchy and, and uh, refreshing versus the warm and comforting soft pizza. So adding in vegetables is now a natural thing for me because now I don't force it. it it's it's like I, I just crave it because I, I allow myself to truly come into what what my body needs and what's going to taste good. And then, you know, if it weren't for my big meal prep phase, I'm pretty sure I would have realized the convenience factor of having ready to go nourishment. And I also did this while my son was a toddler. So he found a new love for foods and now eats cherry tomatoes like popcorn. So, you know, I, and I say this because all the moms are nodding their heads because they're like, yes, cue the toddler walking in wanting whatever is in your hand. Um, you know, but I also now have no guilt on Sunday at the zoo when uh, I don't have a meal prepped and, you know, I just have to get whatever's at, at out and about. So again, all these things were great. I learned dieting tips from them, but again, they had so much restriction that I didn't want these foods anymore because it was the only thing that I ate. So now you think of, okay, when I did the intermittent fasting phase, like I never would have known that my body actually likes to eat more in the uh, morning than taper down at night. So this one took me a while to realize, but my body needs more at the beginning of the day because that's usually when I work out. So, you know, and then I, I don't get upset either when I want a midnight snack because we're having a heated game of Monopoly at the table. So, and again, if it weren't for my keto paleo phase, I wouldn't have the knowledge of these creative meals when our son got diagnosed with celiac disease. And I instantly knew how to combine meals together in a nourishing way, but I still don't beat myself up when we sit down for a family dinner of Cheerios, scrambled eggs, and toast, right? And then if it weren't for my gut health phase, I never would have found my love for kombucha and fermented vegetables. So those are all something like I've learned a lot from my chronic dieting journey, and I'm thankful for the experiences and the failures that it took me through. But I can use these as intentions as, you know what, I really like how uh, roasted parsnips tasted, you know, and I never would have tried that if it wasn't for the Whole30 phase. And a lot of times I'll even look up Whole30 recipes, but then add in what I think is missing, like the croutons, the bread, uh, you know, I'll add in cheese or all the things that I shouldn't have because I love vegetable-based meals. But again, I'll add in what's missing. And if you're on a restrictive diet or specific diet, restricting calories or tracking, you know, know that I don't judge you. I'm just sharing my specific journey and how this helped me. Like we're all in different seasons of our lives and I had to travel through this really dark one to get where I'm at today. But if you're trying to constantly find the perfect diet because all the rest have failed, then you have a place here because this is literally what I've built my empire on. My intuitively strong family, this community is here for you. So 
All right, my friends, that is all I have for you today. And thank you again to the wonderful follower and avid listener who requested this topic of dieting and intuitive eating. Uh, to recap, you know what? I, I think that they're two very separate things and you can call it whatever you want. Like, you know, Noom can call it, it's not a diet. You can call it intuitive macro counting, but there's still restriction there. And that's exactly what intuitive eating avoids. So again, go through that intuitive eating process, heal your relationship with food, and then start to realize what feels good to you instead of forcing it. All right, my friends, um, in case you didn't know, in the notes section below, I have a build your plate template that is for free. It's a free download just for you. And I want you to take it. I want you to run with it. And I want you to start building your plate to end binge eating because that's what it's for. And I have meal ideas on there that are going to blow you away. So my friends, until next time, intuitively strong, out.